All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Diatone Roma L3, three inch micro here, uh, based on the Roma frame. You saw the L4 in the previous video. I'll show you the computers here in a second. Now let's get right into uh, all the specs on here. So this is the analog version. A DJI Vista version is coming a little bit later, but they released this one first. You get a Runcam Nano 2 camera here in the front. A, this is the Mamba uh, F411 all-in-one flight controller ESC board. So it's a whoop style board with a 25 amp 4 one ESC and an F4 flight controller. TX400 uh, video transmitter in the back here. 25 to 400 milliwatt power central video transmitter and it's a 20 by 20 and it's using this nice long um, right hand circular polarized antenna. So the motors on here are from their Toka series and these are new 1206 3600 kV and uh, I think they went with that the size and kV for both uh, a little bit of freestyle ability and for some uh, efficiency in long range. Now comparing this to the L4, you've seen videos on this before. It's basically the same frame, but uh, shorter arms for three inch props instead of the four inch props and obviously different motors. But the top plate and the bottom plate on both models are identical as far as I can tell. And they just have different arms. Now, this is kind of a dead cat style in terms of the, the way the frame is designed but the as you can see where the motors are they're about let's see here mm, the width is about the same on the forward motors versus the backward motors whereas on a dead cat typically be further back and closer together so uh it's kind of closer to a h style or x style frame but because of the longer arms here for the rear motors, it does seem to have that dead cat style tuning issues because uh, this does resonate a little bit more than the shorter front arms. And that does cause little wobbles and stuff to come out in the pit tune. So that's a characteristic of the dead cat style because of the longer rear arms. Not a whole lot you can do about that in terms of pit tuning. This is something that's been a flaw in Betaflight pretty much forever and still they haven't fixed it yet but yeah that's um you know they're kind of targeting this for freestyle but because of the dead cat style frame it's not the best freestyle frame in my opinion in this size and um it's probably better for just cruising around and sort of like you know more efficient longer flights um let me just show you how much this thing weighs first so it's supposed to come in at 110 grams according to the website but with the battery strap and then with the camera mount here, it's coming in at 136 grams. So the battery I flew it with is uh, this uh, Forest 520 from GNB. That battery weighs 100, oh sorry, 55 grams. And then all together, drone and battery are coming in at uh, 191 grams. And then with the SMO 4K camera, which I we we'll put in this mount here. This was the flying weight in the flight footage. It comes in at 223 grams. So the uh, camera mount here, um, this came with the drone uh, with all their Roma series and also some of their center whoops. Uh, but this uh, 3D printer part, uh, you can get it from Diatone. Things are gonna, they're gonna be up on their website. It's also on the Diatone Facebook page or Facebook group. And you can download that and print that. That's what I did. And it is meant for this camera, the SMO 4K. And it fits in here just fine. And it holds it in really well. It's nice and snug and easy to get in and out. But yeah, this is the way I flew it. Now, if you want to get this whole setup here with the camera, they sell the drone and the camera all together for a discount. I think you, um, if you just get the drone by itself here, it's like 160, it just comes in a plug and play. And then I added a um, RXSR receiver and your typical, basically just a, there's a little plug back here. You just plug that in. I had just pulled it off of my other Diatone drone that an RXSR and unplugged it from there, plugged it into here, fished it through these little antenna tubes that were included. So I put that into the print here and uh, was already bound and everything. So it was just all ready to go. But if you get the um, plug and play version of this with the camera, I think it's uh, three uh, I think it's around 360, I believe. So basically you get the drone for like $120 instead of $160. And 
anyway, um, you, know, you can check out the prices on the Dietem website. You'll see that if you do get the camera with the L3 bundled together, it is discounted off of each of the items. So the props that came on here are these HQ T3 by 2.5 by 3 props. So they have a little bit more pitch. And this is the one that uh, I think is being used in the stock uh, product photos. In the box was included another set of props. Uh, they were yellow, a T3 by 1.8 by 3. So it's a three bladed 1.8 pitch prop instead of a 2.5 inch prop. So a little bit less pitch. So I'm thinking that if you want a more efficient flight, uh, maybe longer flight and maybe less acro, then go with that prop versus this one. I want to do a little bit of freestyle with this one to see what it was like. And um, th that's the prop you should go with if you want to do that. But I think that I would probably go with a heavier battery than the 520. I'm thinking that um, with the pit tune that they have on here, they probably tuned it for a battery that's right at 250 grams or maybe just a little bit under. Uh, because this does, it did feel like the platoon was a little bit loose based on the weight. Um, so maybe instead of the 520, go for like a 4S 650. I'm thinking that's probably going to get you closer to 250. But yeah, um, finding the right weight for the platoon uh, that came out of the box is sometimes a challenge. And I was not given any guidance as to which exact battery to use. And they should include that on the website as to the uh, bat, you know, what kind of battery you should use and the weight of the battery you should use and or the all up weight for the pigeon. Cause that's gonna be more, more um, sensitive on the smaller drones where as the bigger ones, the, you know, a difference of 10, 15, 20 grams here and there isn't gonna make that much of a difference. But on these little ones, it makes a pretty big difference. Anyway, I think overall, I think the bottom line on this one here is I think it's going to be better for beginners that aren't really expert freestyle pilots. They just want to do a little bit of light freestyle. Um, should be okay for that. But uh, for those of you guys who are doing some serious freestyle, this is not going to be the one for you. And this is going to be more for guys that are going to do more cruising and uh, more efficient flights. So I would actually go with the other props, go with a um, maybe a bigger battery, 650, 750. Get right up there if you want to stay under 250 grams or if you don't care about that then you can get a bigger battery and go for even a longer flight if you want maybe one of those like 1100 uh 4s um low c batteries from gmb that'll give you a probably really long flight with the um, smo camera and you can get your nice 4k footage and it's going to be all stabilized with flow state and all that so yeah that's kind of my sort of feeling on this particular model obviously is the analog the digital ones probably you know, these guys are going to be probably a little bit heavier so going to be a little bit more constrained on the battery options on that one, but that one's not out yet. And I don't know, or don't think that Dietone is going to send that one to me anyway. So that this kind of concludes my thoughts on the L3. Um, here's the flight footage. Yeah. Let me know if you guys uh, have any other questions about this or comments about this particular model. If you want to see additional flights in the future, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Uh, I'm just getting a feel the, for the tune. It's a 524S on here, GNB. Maybe a little bit too light. It's pretty floaty. Not really sure if this really falls into the freestyle category. Uh, I guess they're kind of marketing this towards long range. So it should be pretty efficient. Just a little bit of Bobbles there. Yeah, Insta with the smooth 4K footage is going to be all smoothed out, of course. Didn't seem particularly fast. Some random people showing up. 
Yeah, there's a lot of bobbles with this battery. Uh, maybe it's the extra weight. It is a bit front heavy with the camera up there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably due to the weight distribution and the dead cat style. That's what I think is probably the issue. Hard to tune. Yeah, 3800 kV this is not particularly fast. I don't think this is for racing or really for freestyle. It's mostly going to be for cinematic type flying, I think. But you can do some flippy floppies if you want. Yeah, the, uh, there's some bounce back there. So this tune is, I think, was meant for some other battery wasn't listed on their website, so I don't know what the recommended battery is exactly. Can kind of try and fly around it. Yeah, three minutes of flight. I'm already at 14.3 volts. Oh, doesn't seem super efficient. Yeah, they got some bobbles there. Yeah, I think that for this battery, I'm probably gonna need to do some retuning. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm probably wanna go to a bigger battery, like an 850 4S. And yeah, that'll definitely cut the freestyle out of this for sure. You could probably, if you want to do freestyle, you could probably retune it for freestyle on the, on the lighter battery. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. That's the end of this flight. Talk to you later.